Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, we have Mike Sokol. He's the Senior Managing Director on NASDAQ's Market Intelligence Desk. With our midday update, we're also going to take a look at some ISM manufacturing and services data. Mike, it's great to have you back with me, as always. And no surprise to see why the market is up today following those headlines this morning. Yeah, so we're up 200 today. We're kind of climbing out of the hole that was uh, from yesterday. So the market's been underpinned all year really on three main things. One is the Fed being accommodating uh, Trump uh, in trade talks, and then you have uh, uh, hopefully a slow but not uh, stalling economy. Mm -hmm. So in March, we, I'm sorry, in November, we were up 4%, and uh, year to date for some NASDAQ indexes is up 30%. Uh, yesterday, we got a little bit of a scare because uh, Trump said he was musing on maybe that you don't need a trade to deal until after the November 2020 election. Which yeah. takes out uh, maybe underpinning, uh, you know, takes out one of the underpinning legs for the uh, the rally. Uh, today we're rebounding because I think his handlers got out there and quickly said, well, you know, maybe that's just him speaking off the cuff, and we're still probably on pace to get a tra trade deal done in December, with December 15th, of course, being a key date. So we're rebounding a bit today. Yeah, no surprise to see the backtracking there. Yeah. Let's take a look at our first chart of the day. It's ISM manufacturing. What are we looking at longer term here? Yeah, I hope you can see that. I mean, the basic. Uh, uh, premise here on the chart is, is more towards the end is that in the last four months we've had readings on or about 48 and any number below 50 indicates contraction. Mm -hmm. So you are seeing a real world impact to some of the trade discussions. Some of the ISM manufacturing uh, survey components have to do with sentiment and uh, what people believe to be about the future. And so you're getting some impact from the trade discussions and uh, weakening perhaps. Uh, the GDP forecast has been ticking lower as a result of uh, the ISM number. So for the manufacturing number, uh, that really hurt stocks on Monday, and that's why I wanted to highlight it and contrast it to maybe the services number, which is a much larger component of the economy, and that's what's keeping us afloat in a sense. All right, let's move along to our next chart here where we are taking a look at services. Even still there, you're seeing a little bit of a downtick. Yeah, a little bit of a downtick. Uh, the main thing is, again, that number 50, which indicate, indicates expansion. So the number had been running between 55 and 60 since the election and has been, uh, you know, ticking down now. It's in like the 50 to 53 range. So still expansion, but slower. Uh, but again, services are a very key part of the economy. That's where we have some competitive advantages in things like banking and technology. Uh, so overall, when you net it out with the manufacturing, we're still not stalling. Um, but you can see these numbers are coming in a little bit. It's just something to watch in yeah. addition to, of course, the trade commentary. You know, it's really interesting to see just how married the movement in stocks is on the trade commentary, because even with the ADP number this morning, it was almost, I think, half what expectations are. I'm curious to see what happens on Friday with the jobs number, and if that is another big miss, because could that potentially signal the uncertainty in what's happening with trade is hindering employment? Is, is that I, a possibility? I think you nailed it. I mean, the market completely ignored the ADP number, and the futures uh, number stayed about the same yeah. uh, after it hit. And so you wonder, is it just the market discounting the fact that that's a noisy kind of a number? Or if there's some other hopeful signs in the, uh, the number that we're going to get from the BLS survey that we're going to get later this week. Right. So, I mean, I would imagine that's, uh, that's going to be a big focus on Friday, unless, of course, we get another wild swing in terms of uh, trade headlines. You're one tweet away. All right. Mike, thanks so much for joining us at MarketSite. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.